What's up guys and gals? I hope you are ready for today's fly tying tutorial video. We're going to be tying a Pertagon chronomid or Pertagrons. Basically what that means is I'm tying my chronomids out of hen's Pertagon material. I have number 8 red, number 30 black with me. This is the medium size. Uh, the reason I like using this stuff on chronomids, especially if I want something that's got some little more transparency to it, because that material does have a transparency, I'll show you a video right now. Here's four different flies I tied with red. One's got white thread, red thread, and black thread. And because it's transparent, it's going to show your thread body a lot more depending on how heavy you wrap the tinsel. Now I like to wrap mine on a thinner side to give some of that coloration of the thread underneath. It gives a nice flash to it. Also shows the coloration of the Pertigone body material itself but gives you some wiggle room on what you can do with your fly. Uh, and one of them actually is a fluorescent red thread as well. It shows up really well underneath to make it a much brighter fly. Uh, so to get started here, we have, this is actually going to be my now permanent chronomid hook. And that is Partridge's Check Nymph. This is a size 12. I really like the length of this hook with the curvature that it has. It's not over curved. It does give some curvature to it. And they do take it down to an 18 and they even have a fine version of this hook. And then bead wise I am using a black nickel 3.3 tungsten. So to get this guy started I'm going to slide my bead back. And I'm using a Lagarton thread in a 95 denier. I'm just going to get my thread started in front of my bead. And I'm going to take a little bit of this. This is our, actually our fine natural dubbing in white. That's what I like using for the gills. It, uh, it's, it's really cheap and very easy to use. And I can pretty much make it as small as I want to for any size bug I'm tying. What I'll do here is I usually fold it in half and cut it. So I have a pretty even patch up front, and then I'll tie it down, give it a little pull to make it a little smaller, and then enough wraps to tie it down, give it a twist, and cut it. And I'll twist to cut it, and then I'll make that really little, little clip edge so you're not dealing with a whole bunch of frazzled material. And I'm just gonna two, three, four, whip finish, get that tied off. And it looks pretty good to me up front. Slide the bead up. And you'll usually know if you got way too much because you won't be able to slide that bead up there. Now I'm going to start my bead, my thread behind the bead. I'm not going to go too far because I do want a thinner profile. Chronomids aren't super thick insects. But I do want some body but not, not a lot. So I'm going to start off right here. I'm going to pull this out. What I'm going to do here is pull a bit off. And then secure it back into the little tab that pops out so I can secure it back in there. Lay it down so I'm not unraveling it, not cutting chunks off, I'm not wasting material. And it's much easier to control this way. But I'm going to go ahead and tie that in. And I'm going to go all the way to the back. I'm going to do my best to not have any gaps because it is a tinsel. Tinsels and thread bodies, if you don't do really good even wraps, you will end up with gaps and bumps in your thread and in your body. Whoop, and I just nicked it. Well, that's going to happen. And the way we fix that is with our handy dandy scissors. Let me just get this up here and even. There we go. There's the edge piece right there. And this is actually good because it'll show you how to kind of manage this it didn't break so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that frayed section pull that up tighten this back down up right on the bead where I'm not going to worry about it being a little thicker come in and clip that the reason I'm not freaking out about that is we're going to coat the whole dang thing in resin I just want to make sure I get those little fibers trimmed up the best I can and that's going to save save that. We don't have to cut it. We don't have to do anything. 
but that fixes that problem. I know that happens because apparently you just watched me do it, but it happens to everybody, so don't feel bad if it does. Wire-wise, back on the fly, we are actually using Sibai's flat wire. This is a size medium silver. I love this stuff for my chronomids because it's flat. It is a wire that is well, rolled flat. And it gives me a nice rib presentation without giving this real round bump and gives my bug a little more natural look rather than having this bulky rib. And again, I am keeping my wraps pretty even, doing my best not to build too much bulk or leave gaps. And there we go. Now, back to the Pertigo material. I'm going to untangle it, or un loosen it from that uh, lip, roll it up, I'm going to put my bug on its side, and I'm going to wrap it on the side. Because it's a curved hook, when you put it on the side like this, let's get the wire secured, there we go. Because it's a curved hook, if you roll it to the side, and this is where having a rotary vise is beneficial, it keeps the tinsel and the wire from sliding. And when you're, that, that is a problem, especially when you have more drastically curved hooks. And rolling it on the side will prevent that because it pretty much puts your hook on a level plane. And then you can just wrap it without issue. Now we'll get this wrapped up here. I am wrapping it so that it's basically a half over thread, half over the last wrap. That's going to secure that I don't have gaps. And gives me a nice layer of flash. Whoop, I let it go loose, it wrapped, unwrapped, it went back a little bit. There we go. We'll give one, two, and three wraps there. And we're going to get this back secured in that little tag lip. Open it up, wrap it in there, pop it closed, that ain't going nowhere. Now the nice thing about chronomids, what I love about them is you, there's so many different ways to tie them. You can go super simple, super complicated, um, and just have fun with them. From Flash Taboo, Pretty Gun Material, we're going to do a session of these of just different materials, different styles, and really give you an opportunity to explore that fly box. And give you a couple fly boxes, probably. Okay, so now we're going to do our rib. This is the flat silver in size medium, and I'm just making sure that my, you know, my wraps are going to be even. I want even spacing through the whole thing. And there we go. And we'll just one, two, three, four, five, six. And everyone knows that nice little technique. The twist and pop makes it right even with the thread. And there you go. We'll do a couple more wraps just to secure it. Now, we're going to take a resin. I really love the Raid Zap Super Thin. And this just goes right onto I'm not even squeezing it. I'm just tilting it. And it kind of flows right out. Uh, so, yeah, be careful on your fly packs, your travel kits when you're tying, because that can happen. I had a bottle go open because I didn't secure the cap properly. And it went into my bag. So we're just going to make sure that's got a nice even coat. I'm not trying to go too, too thick because they'll get a drop. If that does, squeeze this, put it up there. It'll actually suck it back in. But that's going to make sure everything is nice and secured. Give it a cure. And a couple turns. That's good enough. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the uh, dubbing behind this. Uh, Natural Peacock is amazing for that. I really love the liveliness of it, but I want this to be a little flashier, so we're going to use our Disco Dub. This is the Peacock Curl color. This is why I like this stuff. It's got a lot of that variation bronzy green, a little bit of black in there, and some ultraviolet color. Now, this stuff does have some nice length to it, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pinch here. Break, break, break it short. So that it is nice, a bit shorter, and makes it a little easier to twist on 
when I'm using a small amount. It's nice having long dubbing uh, for doing full bodies, but on a short section, I don't want real long dubbing because then it's just a kind of a pain to deal with. You got to try to scrape it off, cut it off. But this way, having it broke down a little shorter makes it much easier to work with. And we'll give a little whip finish right there. Whoop. We'll back that off because it's separated around the bead. There we go. And it broke, and that's totally fine because it is knotted. Now, I'm going to have some spikiness here. What I'm going to go through do is go through and do is just give that a little trim with my scissors. Leave it a little buggy, but it leaves the sh cuts down the spikiness, and you don't have it super far because it's not natural on the carnivore. And then we'll put a nice little drop right in there. And you notice I didn't do a resin or a glue when I did the gill piece because my knots back here where the dubbing's at and that super thin soaks right in and that ain't going to be coming undone. I'll give that a quick dry. And there you go. A Pertichron or Pertigone Chronomid. Super simple, super easy, very reliable. Um, there is a massive color range you can do. You can do this. You don't have to use this stuff if you want more solid color bodies. You can always go the flashable route. Uh, but I really like playing with transparency because it gives me an opportunity to really play with underbodies, color changes, and give an absolute devastating change to my fly. This one's done with a fluorescent red. That's done with black. But you can really see how that body changes and lights up. Having a few of these in your box is not a bad idea, guys. So... All right. Well, we'd love to see your fish pictures, your variations of it. Tie some up. Tag us on Instagram and Facebook. We'll do what we can to share them. And we'd love seeing what you guys do. Until next time, this is Thomas. I'm signing off. You guys have a fun time. Bye.